business. Um, dead time lucky, by way of summary. <laughs> um, here's your chart of um, the S&P. Now, what is what we're going to look at is predominantly um, over the next hour the Swiss pairs against the Swiss, um, and then um, other currency pairs um, that represent good opportunities. Now, there's a reason for the Swiss. Look at this decline in the S and P. We have the rally. Okay, we have the bounce back. We know, right, as a as a certainty that nothing in the market doesn't matter what market that might be. Nothing goes in a straight line. The S and P did go in a precipitous straight line from the turn of July into August. This bounce here. This bounce from 1080 to 1200, that bounce was a guarantee. The extent of that rally, we were not to know. However, we needed to know at what point we should have been short. And the short point was when the momentum, the pullback fizzled out. We were looking at the two, three, four day lows, drawing a gift in here, and we have over the last two days a strong decline. We were in that, we were short that, and if you look at the Swiss franc, this is exactly the same, but at this point, this is where we are in the Swiss franc, where we're yet to have that, the next leg down. Um, to quote um, the FT the FT weekend, I've got it in front of me here, um, it's quite useful to, I always get, I don't get the FT during the week, I get it at the weekend, it's useful to to see what, you know, to get a, um, to get a view of the week um, just gone, um, now of course, you know, we're involved in it, you know, at the, at the coal face all week, so um, we know what's going on, but it's interesting to get the to get some of the, the reports in, in the FT. Now, oh, the headline um, in one of the market reports in the FT reads, lukewarm efforts by SNB, which is the Swiss National Bank, fail to cool Swiss francs pace. Now, in these times, there's the, the threat of intervention. We've seen, I mean, the Swiss National Bank have sort of, you know, they they, they said they were going to try and peg the, the Swiss to the euro. That, I mean, you know, that was, you know, hearsay pretty much. The, the reason why we're going to look at the Swiss pairs over the yen pairs is because the, the Bank of Japan are much more active, okay, in their, now over the last 10 days, actually the yen's probably, it's been stronger than the, than the, than the franc, but the yen, we have a high risk of intervention. The reason that this, I mean, of course, the Swiss is a safe haven currency. The reason the Swiss doesn't look exactly like the the uh, S and P, i.e., we've had the decline, we had the rally, we haven't had the next leg down in the Swiss in the Swiss franc because of the threat of S N B. The threat is much greater with the Bank of Japan. So. This, the the Swiss National Bank, um, their balance sheet is billions offside because they've tried to intervene before and they failed. There's nothing saying that this, if anything, the Swiss National Bank activity is is not going to stem the, it's not going to halt the increase, you know, in the medium term. It's certainly not the action they're they're doing now. It's certainly not going to um, reverse the the trend of the Swiss franc. So there is a good chance that the the, the strength in the market um, will take over and if we see further declines, okay, to, if we take out these lows in the S&P, there's a very high chance that the, the 
Swiss franc. Okay, so take an image of this S and P. It's a very high chance that the Swiss franc will follow. Here's your decline. Here's your rally. So here we were. Here we are in the the Swiss franc. You see what we're lacking. It's it's almost as if this chart has is missing is missing two days. As you see, if we get further declines in the, it's holding on. It's holding on and holding on. It's exactly where the S and P was three days ago. Right. I hope that is. I hope that's clear to everybody, and that is the reason why we're interested in in terms of trend there is no trend change here okay that's momentum low this is a pullback there is no sign of any structure yet the swiss franc is not andy hi the swiss franc is not at a reversal point technically or in terms of price action okay so our bias is still for trend to continue it has to be until we are given evidence for the price to assume otherwise okay so it's the Swiss that is gonna guide us rather than the yen in terms of um, being on the side in the direction of the trend because the yen is much more susceptible to intervention. Uh, the Bank of Japan are much more effective than the, the SMB. Oh, we'll cover that in two secs, Andy. That's exactly what we'll do. Okay. Um, right. Then let's go. Now, the why do you think gold, just before we go on to the individual um, currency pairs, this, this is by way of explanation. Um, this explains what I've just uh, what I just said about the, the threat of intervention in the yen, the threat of intervention in the, the Swiss E. That explains very clearly and directly that that is gold. Um, there is not intervention threat in gold. The yen's a safe haven, Swiss is a safe haven. If those two, it, it goes without saying, it makes perfect sense. If there's a threat of intervention in, in you know, the, the Swiss and the yen, there isn't in the gold. So that is why gold has gone into this impressive move, perpendicular move to the upside. Okay. That the market has to, it has to make sense, and this makes perfect sense. Okay. So we're going to start with this, with the um, with the concern, the fallouts in the markets. We have yen, Swiss. The US dollar has been historically a safe haven. The opposite to that, you have the commodity currencies. Commodities decline um, on economic concern, and the Aussie and the CAD are commodity currencies. So, our first port of call is the CAD Swiss and the Aussie Swiss. CAD actually in the near term has been the weakest so we're going to go to the CAD Swiss now pen and paper at the ready if you've got charts there as we go along I want you to put all my lines I've already I've been here last two hours I put all my the lines on my chart I filled the rail screen so you know, I'm not going through it as I do it it's all on there so pens and paper at the ready and if you've got your charts there put the same lines on as I have on my chart so you've got a ready-made chart um, when you go 
So, CAD Swiss then. What's the market condition? It's trending. Lower lows, lower highs. It's trending down. Where's the direction of the trend? The, the sellers are in control here. Makes sense. The CAD. CAD's um, a very close business partner to the US. There's US, US concern and CAD is also a commodity currency. Weakness in the CAD, there's strength in the um, Swissy. So the CAD Swiss is trending down. This is a momentum, momentum low. We have a new momentum low here. We've had the pullback. We are looking, okay, this is like the, the stalled S&P picture again. We saw what happened in the S&P. We are interested in patterns and price action playing out. We've seen, we've had a bit of a heads up in the S&P. Um, here's the pullback. I mean, we've got, in terms of what I've done here, in terms of you know the two structures, um, technically speaking, right, the they're not structural points as I mean those of you that have done gone through the course and are educated in price behaviour, you know that in these sessions when we talk of structural longs and structural shorts, they're not technically okay, structural failures, but they are we call them structural points for this uh, this session because they're just bigger levels, they're from the daily rather than the two the two hundred tick chart. That's the only uh, that's important differentiation to make. Um, structural short is on here. It's the we had actually we had a gap here at the beginning of last week, um, Sunday to Monday. The opening on Monday in the Swiss pairs we actually gapped up. It's unusual in uh, it's unusual in currencies, but we had one. Um, the Tuesday the low made was the top was the bottom of the gap. Um, that is going to be that's going to be our structural short. It's taken into account. It's basically last week's low, um, and that level structural short then is seventy-eight, seventy-nine. So it's the one, two, three for five day, five day low. It's the weekly low then, and it's the it's the point where um, on day two the gap was filled from Monday. That's our structural short. If we break that short then at 78.79, effectively it will be a break of a gift line for those of you um, that are familiar with the gift line. That is precisely why we shorted the S&P. We're using exactly the same analysis of the price. That's why we shorted the S&P last week and we had the declines. You see, we closed at the lows Friday in this CAD Swiss and we are now poised for a nice entry to the short side. The so structural lot short then 78.79. The structural long, um, I started out by saying we haven't had a failure to make a new low so we don't have a structural failure but structural long it will be the high of last week and that's 81.60. So high oh, last week 8160 uh, th here's the last momentum low in the downtrend up 8367 if you know for a much more significant structural long that 8367 would be um, a better long for a, to hold a, a position for a reasonable amount of time but the, the closest closest long be the 8160. Going to the 200 tick then, narrowing it down. Here's the last, here's last week's picture. Um, you can see that, you can see on the daily, the last week's been broadly, it's been, you know, broadly consolidating within a range. That gives us.
terms of opportunity to the downside, we're much nearer the short opportunity than we are the long opportunity. And of course, our expectation, the high expectation, is to the downside because that's the direction of the prevailing trend. So the short point is when I get to 200 ticks, the short points are represented by the red lines, the long points by the green. So you've got them on there. So before I actually say them, you can see what levels they are. Um, the one day low um, is our short point. That short point is 79.04. Seventy nine oh four on the short side is the one day low, and indeed that one day low is the low of uh, a number of days. To the long side, okay, uh, the short stop. Excuse me, the short, the seventy nine, seventy nine oh four to the short side. If you're going short there, you'll stop. You don't want a, you don't want a strong reversal. So your short stop is seventy nine twenty five. Okay, you wanna, you don't wanna give. You want to maybe take into account this this low here, the low made in the U.S. session. That's going to be the other side of that is going to be your your stop. Your short stop is seventy nine twenty five. To the long side, the very earliest opportunity is sort of the top of this the top of this range here. We should be taking into, you know, we'd have to come back through the one and two day, the one and two day lows, um, and the three day low here. We'd be rejecting that. We'd come, or at least the two day low, we'd have to come back inside. You know, you'd want to see a move back above. I mean, it, it's, it's not a priority, the long side, of course, and indeed. The long, I mean, the very the closest long is 80.17. It's not the best trade in the world. We're going counter trend if we take that, and actually the structural long is 81.60, which is you've got a bit of a bit of a wait for it. But to be honest, that's your aggressive long. I would be in you know, by, by virtue of the fact we're going counter trend, if you're going to take a long trade, um, personally, I would be inclined to wait for much more confirmation than that. But our nearest, our nearest buy um, for a specifically a day trade would be 8017. The long stop, again, we want it close. Your long stop is going to be 80 the figure. Because you want the, the long stop close in a downtrend because the chance of a snap back into the direction of the trend is much higher. Okay, so the long point 80.17, the long stop is 80 the figure. Okay, right, so there you have the CAD Swiss, there's a reminder of the, the daily, you see how similar this is looking to the price action we played out in the S&P. Okay, let me stop the recording, we'll move on.